We start with our newsmaker segment and talk with one of the principal players in Kansas Democratic politics and state government, the minority leader of the House, Jim Ward of Wichita. Mr. Ward previously served in the state Senate and has been in the House since 2003. He's on a short list of Democrats being talked about as potential candidates for the gubernatorial nomination next year. Perhaps we'll find out in the next few minutes if that speculation is valid. Mr. Leader, welcome to Ruckus. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I look forward to the conversation. For folks who don't spend their days checking in on Kansas state government, uh, how would you define the role of minority leader of the House? Um, obviously two parties, the Republicans and the Democrats. We have 125 members. The Democrats constitute about a third or 40 um, and I am their leader and we'll try to help keep us organized and informed about issues before we vote. Uh, there was a time not too many years ago when we would see so-called moderate Republicans work with Democrats when people said there were three political parties in Kansas, Democrats, moderate Republicans, conservative Republicans. That changed, I think, during the brown bag era, but it appears it might be changing back. Absolutely, and in the Kansas House of our 125, it's about a third Democrat a third moderate Republican and a third ultra conservative. But remember, all Democrats don't think alike, all moderate Republicans don't think alike. And so you get a range from really conservative moderate to very liberal moderate, and it's a challenge every day to put the 63 together. When you go back into session, and I realize there may be a special session between now and then, but talking about January of 2018, do you think there'll be more cooperation between so-called moderate Republicans and leading Democrats? There will be, and we did a lot of cooperation this year, but we don't all think alike, so it's, we have to work through some of the challenges to get to those compromises. It's like they say, you don't want to see sausage or laws <laughs> being made, but at the end of the day, I think we came up with some very good, serious steps forward to rebuild Kansas. I'm sure you were among those who advocated a tax increase. I did think we had to reform our income tax system in Kansas. It was wrong to have 330,000 people use services and not pay income tax. It was a based on a flawed theory that Kansas could eliminate income tax, and we repealed both of those things and we added a third bracket, right. which is the higher end. People 60,000 and over. Uh, is this going to be enough money? We're waiting for the Supreme Court. Um, it's close. Uh, remember, if you went back to 2012 before the tax experiment, we still cut taxes from right. that rate. Yeah. Um, so we're still struggling to find that okay, sweet spot. The state legislature has allocated, I think, $193 million more to the schools. And then before that is resolved in the Supreme Court, the school districts, including yours in Wichita, mine in Kansas City, Kansas, already asking for $1.5 billion more. If the state Supreme Court says, yeah, that's the right figure, what does the legislature do? It'd be a big challenge. $1.5 billion is real money, even for state government, and it would be difficult. Luckily, they're not asking for it all in one year. We'd have to phase in and over a period of time. Is there no end to how much money schools should receive in Kansas? Um, I'm not really sure how to take that question. Well, it, let me clarify it. Uh, nobody seems to know how much is enough. Do you know how much is enough? Well, there's not enough enough. Because what happens, just like at your house... But you can't give me a figure. Well, let me explain why. It, it, just like your gas prices keep going up every year, the cost of running schools. So once we get a formula and a method of funding schools that's based on needs, then you get, that, that, you get in that sweet spot for enough. You're an attorney. Wouldn't it be helpful if the state Supreme Court suggested a figure? Well, about 10 years ago, they actually did that. And the ultra-right conservatives just about lost their minds about separation of power and the Supreme Court over-exceeding. What the court does is set the parameters and identify the flaws, and we're supposed to fill in as public officials. Let's get to the big news. Are you going to run for governor? <laughs> Not today, I'm not. I will tell you some serious people that I respect have been talking to me about it for the last couple of weeks. Are you leaning toward it? Well, I'm obviously listening. When you get Is that why you're in this area, to visit with uh, political people? Um, I do that. I also have several members in the Johnson County area and the Wyandotte County area that I keep touch with as leader to make sure that they're ready for the next election. If you choose to run, what one or two topics would you be emphasizing? Continuing to fiscal responsibility, we took some good steps forward this year, but we're not done. And that includes making sure our schools are top quality. We've got to repeal this concept that government goes away. There are certain essential core services, and I'll have a conversation with the people of Kansas about how to do that. Great to talk with you. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for having me, sir. You bet. That is the minority leader of the Kansas House, Jim Ward.
Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus.